I'm just gonna make sure we're live. <laughs> Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another live stream. Today is November 16th, 2019, and we're doing an open discussion on current events, news, politics, economics, and whatnot. And we've done a few of these in the past. And um, basically, there's a lot going on in the world. Uh, things are kicking up big time uh, everywhere, really. Uh, there's no isolated location that's standing out more than other like south america is pretty grand south america is huge uh, middle east is huge europe is huge canada united states is huge mexico is huge asia is huge right africa huge right so it's global and uh, we're just putting aside a couple hours today a couple hours tomorrow we're gonna brainstorm talk about things talk about certain events um, and uh, see where it takes us right tank how are you doing hope you're doing well and uh, that's my intro to these things right now so we're just gonna wait until people start rolling in we already got one person here tank good morning how are you doing um and there's just the news cycle is insane it's uh it's difficult to keep uh, keep on top of things there's no doubt about that okay um and we're seeing a lot of dragons how are you doing hey chicho what's up doing good brother doing good um been doing some stuff in the background and by the way just to let you know hopefully the sound is coming out okay we're going we're back to going through the yeti mic okay and uh, i'm running a couple of filters on here uh, through obs so hopefully that's uh the sound is coming out okay uh tink not bad sir got a fair bit of stuff to splurge out splurge out on the uk politics when you're ready ah oh, tink that's right you really wanted that dante how are you doing uh tink uh if you want to talk about things i'm ready like we've done a little intro what time is it with two minutes <laughs> maybe we should give people another three minutes we'll give people like five minutes to roll in and then they can they can catch up with the conversation they can read the chat or whatnot of course right so tell you the truth whenever whenever you want to talk about things we can talk about it i caught up a little bit on uh on uh, the brexit stuff just watched a couple of podcasts uh, podcasts or news reports and stuff open discussions and read a couple of articles uh this tricky trickery going on in the uk now i know why you're you're sort of not sure which way to go sleepy ways how's it going how's life looking forward to today's stream me too man like i've been consuming as you know we, once we started these political streams i started consuming news on a on a mad level right and because things are kicking up hardcore i'm consuming news on either <laughs> on a on a higher higher level right the frequency and i'm watching videos on one and a half double speed just catching up on stuff checking up on my feeds a fair bit uh again i'll i'll state this again i'm not sure where most of you guys are there's a lot of people here from the uk uh there's some people here from canada a fair bit of people from the us that come here and stuff like this we are lucky okay it doesn't mean we're going to stay lucky forever but we are lucky right now because certain things are playing out in a certain way that is going to have what's the correct terminology it's, it's gonna it's gonna have a ripple effect okay we're already seeing some of the some of the policies that were implemented in other parts of the world for a number of decades being rolled out in europe canada and the united states in a, in a in a big way in an accelerated way right so we'll see how that plays out in the next few years next couple of decades in let's call it the western world for lack of a better word okay so it's pretty important it's pretty important to see what's going on in other parts of the world for us to appreciate what is to come for us if we're in canada united states and europe 
Olive, how are you doing? Sticks are manan. People shall not speak the truth. 100%. There, there is 100% a war on language right now. Okay. This PC culture, the, the people being offended and governments bringing in laws and platforms banning certain terms and certain phrases. This is a war on truth. Okay. So whatever you do, don't buy into this BS of the centralized powers pushing these things down our throats. We have to keep the dialogue open. We have to keep the conversation going. Okay. We should never uh, ban people from speaking their mind unless they're trolling, unless they're instigating uh, serious I'll, I'll, I'll refrain from continuing that thought because the words have because there's been a war on words so certain words that I'm used to using if I use them they've been given a negative connotation right negative meaning so all of a sudden they're perceived in a different light while we're waiting for um, waiting on people to roll in quick question do you know how to do uh, interpolation in mathematics uh the the lagarde method of of the newton's divided uh newton's divided differences interpretation polynomial method i don't i would have to look that up uh praise thy son 420 and i like your name right uh i would have to look that up to figure out exactly what you're referring to because i can't remember what some of the things that i know what they're called Newton's divided differences interpolation uh, interpolation in mathematics it, I, it, it it's not ringing a bell for me uh, I'm sorry um, but we will be doing a, a math again live stream most likely next week um, if you want me to look into this uh, praise thy son 420 please post this in the math folder that we have on discord and I'll remember to look this up uh, to see what it is and then I'll be prepared for your question if you want to talk about this further during the live stream Robert the two how are you doing sticks are on governments have been putting pressure on YouTube and Google to censor what's considered fake news and racism YouTube deleted two government critic critical sites from Sweden YouTube eventually had to unlock the accounts again because the videos videos was deemed not racist or fake news in the end nice sweden in germany is leading this charge against the free world on internet yeah and europe in general europe passed some laws regarding their copyright laws and all this crap that um are gonna are gonna filter out information that a lot of europeans should be getting that they're not gonna get okay so vpn is your friend going through i don't go through tor but vpn you can get a vpn and mask where you're from that way you can have access to more information um, and it's not just fake news and racism youtube is now rolling out a policy where if it's not economically viable videos they'll be able to delete the channels right like for us for my channel on youtube i have a lot of stuff that's monetized every now and then things get demonetized every now and then i get hit with copyright claims some of my disputes some of them it's like whatever right but i don't know what the ratio is youtube is going to use to decide what channels you know they're going to delete and what channels they're not going to delete right a lot of politics channels on youtube i'm pretty sure they're not monetized so youtube google alphabet inc wall street can say these are not economically viable we are deleting these channels okay decentralization is the name of the game if you are watching this video on youtube and you've never been to my discord page after i've loaded it on if you're on um, twitch as well keep this in mind if you're only subscribed on youtube also subscribe to my channel on bitshoot okay very very important if you're following any creators on youtube that they also have a channel on bitshoot follow them on bitshoot 
Me personally, the channels that I follow that are on YouTube and are BitChute, I follow them on YouTube, I follow them on BitChute, but I only have the BitChute notifications turned on because I watch their videos on BitChute. I want to basically train myself to go to those platforms to watch uncensored information because the odds are some of those channels will stop loading stuff on YouTube because they're going to get nailed or they're just going to disappear off of YouTube and you'll lose your source of information because Germany already will fine or imprison people there, people for speaking anything the government uh, feels is not what they want. Yeah, and we've seen that happen, right? It's very nuanced of the PC culture. I do think identity politics and stuff like that. this are just even more boxes to divide people and distract from the real core issues. Agreed, sleepy wave, one hundred percent. I'm not sure if I agree. For instance, certain websites to allow white supremacy to operate because it can has uh, perpetrated violence. Uh, sleepy waves. Personally, for me, I don't believe putting anyone out of the cultural dialogue. Okay, because as soon as you throw them away, right, put up barricades so certain pop certain sector of the population never knows that these people exist what their thoughts are what their agenda is that's when you have a problem it's better for the light to shine on this that's my personal take right i don't believe in censorship for anything uh, of course it, it involves activities such as epstein hollywood wall street are political uh, politicians that are connected within that realm of the Epstein crowd and the Epstein act activities, right? That stuff needs dealing with. Hate speech is also a tool in the war against the free world. People complaining they can't say racist shit anymore. Dante, what's racism, right? I agree there are racist people I've dude, I've encountered racism up the yin yang living in Canada, right? Since I was like wee bit, right? I rather them be racist in my face than racist behind my back. Okay. I don't wanna silence racists. I want them to be who they are in public, right? Because those people who are racist in the background they do things that are detrimental to society, right? If they're openly racist, then they're not going to fool a certain huge sector of the population to believe their BS. Big difference in questioning uh, my migration politics and really be racist. Real racism and ignorance of stupidity. Real racism, I, I heard this recent interview with uh, Gabo Mate, Aaron Mate, his son interviewing Gabo Mate, and he was talking about Zionism and anti-Semitism and stuff like this. He has a, and I linked that up in our Discord page, and he had a great definition of what should be considered racist and not racist, right? Yeah, that's why people analyze this sort of content. Who analyzes what? It literally does not happen. People can talk all the shit about the government they want. They can get Dante, they can get a knock on the door. We've seen that happen in Canada and the United States, in Europe as well, I believe, right? Where you talk whatever you want, you say certain wrong words, and there's a government knocking on, on your door. Like the one lady out CVS yelling the N-word and saying she would kill N-word. That is just straight up being stupid. Uh, Tigra, Ty, Tigra, 84X, maybe she's mentally ill, right? And obviously she is, right? So if we criminalize that, that means you're criminalizing mental illness, right? You lock people up for mental illness that we do right now, right? That has to happen not behind closed doors right that way we can deal with it maybe someone in the public 
someone that she could connect with would go up to them and say, what's wrong? Right. And then she will start talking and thinking about what she's saying. And she might be open to new ideas. Dante, I bet you would love it in Sweden. Pol political parties that don't agree with the current uh, migration politics in Sweden have been called racist in debates and newspapers without any evidence for the actual racism. Racism uh, became a word that you throw in the face of oppos opposition. A sticks are one. I agree with you. It's the same. It's the same way they dealt with conspiracy theorists, right? Oh, that's a conspiracy. Well, is it true or not? When people say racist things they're gonna get called racist sorry it hurts your feelings but facts don't care about your feelings Dante I I know people that are of older generation okay that they don't understand that the system that were brought up in programmed them to be racist right they don't get it it's deep down they have beautiful hearts they have beautiful souls they have amazing minds but they were programmed in a certain way and they weren't programmed by their peers they were programmed by the state so a lot of the governments centralized powers that have formed our cultural understanding of the world were inherently racist the war on drugs racist colonization pure racism right imperialism pure racism this has to be on the forefront we can't dismiss individuals or shut them out for being racist while accepting governments using violence uh, to colonize places wage war on drugs right because that's centralized racism you only get knocks on the door when you call for violence um i don't think so dante who i'm trying to think of um the, i can't i can't think of a situation right but i know i've come across situations where you hear about police knocking on the door raiding people's homes without violence intention of violence being involved right for example here i'll give you one max blumenthal in the last two weeks two weeks ago i believe he had he had uh, swats basically coming to get him because of false allegations right without the warrant being issued to him telling him that he needs to come in and stuff like this right so max blumenthal journalists are one example how often do I trim my beard when it gets a little chaotic? It varies. Every few weeks, I sort of trim. Sometimes I let it go crazy and I go, oh, okay, 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 I do it. Sometimes I maintain it on a regular basis. So I want to start the UK stuff by giving the chat an overview of the parties in play, in play at the moment. I'll try and type out an objective overview below. Let me know if you guys agree or disagree. Okay, awesome, Tink so let me i'm gonna skip what you're typing out for now and then I'm, I'm gonna catch up with other people's and i'm gonna come back and read your stuff well in the case of trump for instance we know he is openly racist but it allows whites and the um, and the police to feel comfortable enough to even hurt kill people sleepy waves the police have been racist for decades they've been doing this in the background for decades right i personally prefer it being in the light right like for example i'll mention one thing about trump right a lot of people hate on trump he's he's a, he's a whatever right we already talked about what trump is right but one thing you have to appreciate about trump right for decades american presidents have been waging war sending their u.s troops nato troops into other countries on the guise of bringing democracy to those countries trump has come out and openly admitted 
that U.S. military is being used to plunder resources of other nations. I rather have that than someone like Obama saying that they're there to spread democracy instead of telling Americans the truth that they're there to plunder the resources of other nations and kill hundreds of thousands of people. Trump is saying it the way it is. I want things to be in the light, not in the background, because when things are in the background behind closed doors, well-intentioned people and the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Well-intentioned people support psychopaths. When things are in the light, psychopaths are obvious, right? To everyone who they are. That way, well-intentioned people can't support them in good conscience. Okay. That's my take, right? It's not just about feelings. People are losing their lives on this shit, yeah? So am I supposed to not call people racist? No, Dante, for sure you can call people racist. Of course, racist is a racist. But a racist should not be punched in the face, should not be locked up, as long as they haven't committed violence on people, right? A racist should have a right to live their life the way they want. Let them be racist. I have no problem with that. It's like letting Christians be Christians or Muslims be Muslims or Jehovah's Witnesses be Jehovah's Witnesses. They can do whatever they want. As long as they're not committing violence on me, I'm okay with it. If a person is racist, call them racist. If they're not racist, don't call them racist because they don't agree with your ideology. Bro, I know literally all kinds of extremists. Yeah, me too. That makes the world racist have less values. Nothing happens until they they call for violence. Well, that's the US. I'm talking about Germany. Oh, in Germany, yeah, there is some hardcore Dante. Uh, I might wait a bit for my conversation, actually. Chat's going hard on the ethics right now, so I'll let that run. Okay, cool. Imagine believing that uh, soldiers are fighting for your freedom in another country that's not a threat to your own country. Sticks are mana. You know how many people I've talked to in Canada and the United States that actually believe that? Right? Smedley Butler wrote a book on war is a racket telling people and he wrote that book in the 1930s right the most decorated marine in u.s history for ever until like 10 years ago right i think they they decorated other people just so we we, we couldn't call uh general smedley butler the most decorated marine in u.s history right but he wrote a book telling everyone in the world that the american military U.S. military and Western militaries, all militaries, really. Well, I don't want to say all militaries, but most militaries, right? Western militaries, for sure, Canada, United States, Germany, France, Italy, all of them, UK, right? They are the blunt force, the brute force that Western governments use to plunder the resources of other nations for corporations, right? He wrote this book in the 1930s or something. Trump right now is admitting that. Smedley Butler, when he wrote that book, no U.S. president, as far as I know, has ever admitted that fact. Trump has admitted that fact. He deserves respect for that, right? He is telling people why they have a military, right? Soldier, you are about to go into this nation, kill thousands of people, and plunder their resources. That's what recruitment should be. Are you willing to do it? Good afternoon. Camille Barons. Good afternoon. Nice to catch you live. Thank you for being here. US is a big business. Chicho, so happy to finally catch you live. Just finishing your reading of Silver Surfer 50. Much love. <laughs> nice. <laughs> this is a little different. This live stream is a little different, right? Trump should get the Nobel Peace Prize. I don't know about that. Yeah, just like uh, Sticks Arm, just like uh, um, Kissinger, right? All I know is Epstein didn't kill himself. 
I doubt it if Epstein's dead, right? Which Epstein didn't kill himself fits into that category, right? Some people think you can take that in two different directions. Someone killed Epstein or Epstein is alive. I lean towards Epstein being alive, right? Real racists don't mind if you call them racist. So if someone gets defensive when you call them racist, they probably aren't. Or they don't know that they're racist. Haha, <laughs> just a little difference. Legendary Rob Boss. I'm going to allow this. I, s I say we strip Obama of his Nobel, Nobel Peace Prize and give it to Trump. I don't, I don't pay any like Nobel Peace Prize to me means nothing. Extremely naive people. Olive. Yeah, extremely naive people. I, I, some people are racist, but they don't know that they're racist, right? People often get defensive when you call them what they are. Yeah, it means nothing to me too. Yeah, I'm going to read uh, Tink's write-up on the party. Now, as far as I know, before I read Tink's write-up on the UK parties, there's the Labour Party, which is, I believe, Corbyn. You know what? I might get the names wrong, but you have Corbyn, which is Labour, basically. You have the Brexit Party, which is run under Farage, right? You have the Conservatives, I be, believe. That, is that what they're called the, under the, the clown? Uh, yeah, you know what I think? I'm just going to read what you wrote down. And the Conservatives are screwing over the Brexit Party, the Farage's Party, right? So there's an internal war going on there because they don't want really a full-on Brexit. Have held... Okay, so let me read Tink. So just keep this in mind, gang. And by the way, this video is not going to be loaded on YouTube, most likely. Most likely, ah, should I load it on YouTube? YouTube's rolling in some new terms of service. There's a risk of us losing our YouTube channel if I continue to load these political streams on YouTube. I personally don't want to load it on YouTube. I'll let you guys decide. I think these political streams from now on should only be available on BitChute. And I think that's what we're going to stick with. Okay. Have held power. So for the UK, keep this in mind, the Conservative Party have held power for the majority of the last century, typically right leaning and pro business, though in recent years have been putting some more uh, centralist policies forward. They have a history of promising investment and schemes, but not keeping promises. This party is pro-Brexit, and if they gain a majority, will likely push the latest withdrawal agreement through. And think, is this Boris Johnson, the Conservative Party? Da, 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 da. But you have to take... Ba, ba, ba. Uh, let me just ca get caught up with the re nothing to me are all the foreign operations about the resources I think there's a lot of Cold War mentality still going on and fighting these proxy wars just to mess with their big Jew political rivals uh, camel barons yes there is that happening as well but the majority of the activity happening right now is about economics there's very little ideology proxy wars taking place right now majority of it is all about economics maybe in europe africa asia south america latin america okay and there's a minor faction in there which are fanatics in their ideological stand that are supporting certain economic agendas because they correspond with their lunacy right Obama dropped the most bombs, gets the Nobel Peace Prize. Trump barely drops any. Uh, don't get Nobel. Uh, I wouldn't say Trump didn't drop any bombs. He's dropped bombs. Sticks are my not. He hasn't started. He started economic warfare, right? Venezuela. Venezuela was started off with Obama, by the way. So, and started off with Bush Jr., really. Clinton probably had a role to play in it too, but when Chavez got into power, right? But. Obama right now is waging war in Chile, waging war in Bolivia, waging war in Venezuela, continued the support of waging war in Yemen, said he was going to withdraw from Syria, hasn't. 
he came out and admitted that the U.S. military is there to plunder resources, right? And it, it's not much oil, but he's at least admitting it, right? So I wouldn't say Trump has barely dropped any bombs. He's dropped bombs, right? Oh, I only threw out there the conservative party. I've got others ready. Okay, Tank, um, let me get caught up with, uh, with the chat and then throw it in, uh, the UK stuff. Dante, but you have to take people's intentions into consideration. Yeah, Trump bombed more than Obama, though. Uh, Dante, I disagree if Trump bombed more than Obama. Trump bombed, he didn't destroy as many countries. He hasn't destroyed as many countries, killed as many people, displaced as many people as Obama. Obama displaced millions. Yeah, racist people pretend not to be racist. It happens all the time. That's what I take into consideration. Obama decided to overthrow Gaddafi and arm jihadists in Syria. At least Trump hasn't started any new, anything new. Uh, racer kill, we mentioned it. Chile, Bolivia, hardcore. Venezuela, kicking it up hardcore, right? That's three South American countries that he's waging war on, but it's economic war. So people don't consider it to be warfare, but it is warfare, right? And Iran, don't forget Iran, geez Louise, right? We are living in the same world. If you are a country that strives to control other countries and regions, these types of countries are more likely to go to war over resources simply because our world has, has uh, limited resources. So the more resources you control, the more countries and regions you control. Yes, Boris is conservative. Okay. So conservative party, Boris Johnson, I associated with the, their leaders, I guess, but I know a little bit about their background as well. Trump wrapped up the conflict with Iran and he greenlit the coup in Bolivia. Agreed, agreed. 100% Dante. So yeah, he did start new shit. 100%. And the one with Iran is huge, huge, right? The one in Bolivia, huge, huge wrapped up conflict with Iran. He actually kicked out John Bolton, Bolivia maybe. Racer kill, he brought in John Bolton. So you can't just say he kicked out John Bolton, he brought in John Bolton, right? Why did John Bolton come in, right? What John Bolton started is gonna snowball and it is snowballing. Trump doesn't get a free pass on what his administration has done with Iran, absolutely not kicked out John Bolton after hiring him. I agreed, I'm with uh, Dante on this. Every president has dropped bombs, yeah. Hey Chicho, how you doing? Doing good. Camel Barons, thank you very much for the Twitch Prime sub. According to the US Air Force Central Command data, manned and unmanned aircraft released 5,213 weapons between January and the end of September 2018. Previously, 2010 held a record for weapons dropped in Afghanistan with 5,101 releases recorded in total. So first of all, I don't believe the US Air Force Central Command, Dante. That's one thing, okay? The second thing is, where did Trump release those bombs and where did Obama release those bombs, okay? Trump released a shitload of bombs on a deserted Air Force base, uh, airfield in Syria that did nothing, right? It was a laughing stock of the world. The only people that were praising it were uh, American, American propagandists on central news networks saying, look at these beautiful bombs flying over Syria and landing in an air force in an airfield, right? So uh, it's not the, n the number, it's the effects of the number that were dropped as well. Trump advocates for war crimes on TV. Well, he's a war criminal, he should go to jail, <laughs> right? Didn't Obama, uh, is Trump a war criminal? No, he's not a war criminal on the level of Clinton, Obama, and Bush, right? He's starting war wars, but he's not a war criminal as far as, well, no, he is a war criminal now because he admitted that they're in Syria to plunder the resources. That's a war crime. So yeah, Trump is a war criminal too. He should go to jail. Didn't Obama get his peace prize early on in his presidency before he really got to do anything? Yeah, which tells you what the Nobel Peace Prize is. Just because he he was appointed president of the United States, he gets a Nobel Peace Prize? How does that work? 
Trump has been more conservative on military because he acknowledges the military industrial complex as an issue. This is something Obama never did. Agreed on that. However, economic warfare is still warfare. And Trump knows economics more than military, so he's waging economic warfare. Yeah, Obama got his Nobel Peace Prize based on a promise. Trump also ramped up the war in Afghanistan. Yeah. What about Chile? Chile. And he increased Chile. I would say Chile was more of an internal thing. Uh, than an external thing. Chile's external activities began with 1973, September 11th, with Pinochet, when Kissinger and the neocons, whatever you call them back then, overthrew the democratic uh, uh, elected government uh, of Allende's, I believe, and brought in uh, Pinochet, and the neoconservative agenda was rolled out over a number of decades. So that external, external force had been playing off for a number of decades, right? And he increased the military budget to never before seen levels. Yeah. And that's going to continue, Dante. That's inflation, right? That's growth. So we're never going to see that military budget come down unless there's a serious overhaul of US political system. But how do you know people's intentions? I just think that the word racist gets thrown around way too much. And he made billion dollar arms deals with Saudi Arabia. So did Obama, so did Clinton, so did Bush. Iran got too many friends. Iran, Iran is untouchable. Aside from this economic warfare, which is pretty serious. Like really, like there's people dying in Iran because of the sanctions and the economic warfare because they can't get medicine, healthcare and food and all this jazz, right? So it is killing people. Okay, but Iran is pushing back hard, 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 and they will continue to do so. That shit with Iran has gone on for 50 years. It's kicking up, racer kill. Not to make excuses for the guy, but Obama inherited a foreign policy nightmare. Obama came into power saying that he was going to improve the lives of Americans and changed things hope right he had uh city group i believe no goldman sachs person right as hire his basically say who should hire he gave power to wall street he waged he started more wars than bush so he lied he lied through his teeth and people believed that crap that's been consistent u.s policy for decades all of when they say racist shit and you look at their profile and it's full of racism that's a pretty good indication yeah hillary military budget doesn't uh higher military budget doesn't imply more wars or bombing except he's also bombing more <laughs> where else is that money supposed to go the u.s military budget is already obscenely uh, ballooned yeah he bombed afghanistan most of all number of bombings doesn't uh, matter if he's minimizing collateral and he's hitting the targets mm. legendary rob boss you kill one family in a neighborhood that's a war crime right as far as i'm concerned you're you're bombing civilian regions so just just because you didn't destroy annihilate five families you annihilated one family to me that doesn't lessen the crime and if you don't trust official U.S. sources, then why do you trust them when they talk about Obama's numbers? Um, Dante agreed. I quite let me let me say this. I question them, right? I don't take the numbers they release as being the end all, be all of what's going on, because the black ops we know about, right? We know there's black ops everywhere. The black ops were revealed. To the american population in the 90s and uh, sorry in the 80s with the iran contra affair right so since the 1980s anybody that just takes raw data saying this is how much the u.s spends on military they don't know what happened in the 1980s in the 90s the iran contra affair revealed that the united states has a black budget in the hundreds of billions of dollars where they're waging war all over the place without Congress knowing about it, right? 
Okay, so what, according to your definition, qualifies as racism? So 2018, they dropped this many uh, in more than one country. And in 2000, they dropped that bombs in just Afghanistan? I don't know. He also isn't. T -t 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 -t. Civilian deaths from drone strikes are extremely high in Maine. So yeah. In fact, I remember reading that they increased since Trump became president, though. I can't source that. Uh, the Wikipedia definition works well enough for me. Oh, racism? Mm. Uh, they said that the Western world needed financial growth and suddenly Trump came. Yeah. Trump explicitly advocates for killing civilians on purpose. He complained on uh, taking out families of ISIS, AA, grandpas, uh, grandmas, grandpas, newborns, toddlers. Uh, Tech to 1700, <laughs> 1700. At least he admits it. Obama didn't even admit it. And he was doing a lot of that, right? So again, I rather have someone speaking fact, what it is that they support instead of lying and doing things in the background. How did he do economic warfare in Chile? Economic warfare in Chile, uh, slavery ways, was basically from the 1970s, uh, 73. So it's economic warfare that has been continuing since that period. So it's not necessarily Trump doing it. I, I misspoke. In Bolivia and Venezuela, for sure. But Chile is a Western neoconservative economic, neoliberalism, or whatever you want, privatization, that's been rolled out by every president, continued, right? Yeah, it has not increased and you can't source it. Yeah, that too. It really wouldn't surprise me if civilian deaths increase. Can you source me the uh, opposite of that? Da, 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 da. You were the one making the claim. Da, 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 da. Yeah, well, Trump's arms deals were record breaking. Yeah, and uh, I agree with Dante on this level, right? So just because it's not US military killing the civilians, it doesn't mean the US government is not arming a brutal dictatorship that is killing civilians or dictatorships that are killing civilians, right? So Trump sold record number of arms. So, so did Canada, the Canadian government, right? It was signed in by the conservatives and the liberals delivered the weapons, right? So the liberals conservatives tag teaming each other. So Trump sold, or the United States, it's not Trump, Trump is a figurehead, right? The, the US government, sold a ton of weapons to Saudi Arabia that is responsible for killing tens of thousands of people. Uh, as far as I know, in US courts, if you sell weapons, well, no, not legal weapons, I guess this was done legally, I don't. The legality part is ridiculous, right? But US is bloody hands in Yemen. But keep in mind, it was Obama that started the Yemeni's war, right? If I recall correctly, the civilians' deaths indeed increased a lot, but I don't have the numbers in front of me at the moment. Uh, in Trump or Obama, I mean, one thing you have to consider too, when Obama was in power, they re redefined the term enemy combatant to mean children that were 14 years old, males, right? They said, oh, if you're a 14 year old male that can carry a weapon, you're now an enemy combatant. So he, they redefined terms to, to reduce the number of civilians in their, in their stats that were dying, right? At some point, I think it was during the Bush administration, they said, we're not even gonna count civilian deaths anymore. So that's, that's how I feel about US official numbers. I think they're garbage. Civilian deaths have always been a thing in wars. We just keep, keep it on the low side because if the true numbers would actually reach the right light on how many innocent civilians had actually died, it would be chaos. Yeah. And then you went and claimed it wasn't true. Iran and Saudi Arabia are terrorist states. Uh, Iran is not a terrorist state. Saudi Arabia is a terrorist state. Iran has never been proven to be a terrorist state. Okay. Iran hasn't waged war outside of its direct war outside of its boundaries for over 100 years, as far as I know, right? You cannot say Iran is a terrorist state, Rob Boss. Okay. 
That's US propaganda. A country has a right to defend itself. Okay. Iran is not exporting terrorism. Saudi Arabia is exporting terrorism big time, big time. You do not see any Iranians that are committing terrorist acts in the Western world. You do see a ton of Saudis doing it. Okay. Oh, you meant Iraq. No, oh, I just went off on a rant and you didn't mean Iran. You meant Iraq. I don't think Iraq is a terrorist state either, to tell you the truth. Hichari doing doing good. Doing good a Troy. Kuptra. Kuptra. Kupitra. Kupitra. Thank you for the Twitch Prime sub. Have you heard about the gas prices in Iran being increased by 300% overnight? People are pro protesting all over right now. Yeah, the kicker is, why did the gas prices go up 300%? Is it because Iranian government is doing it? Or is it because of the sanctions? It's because of the sanctions. What's going on in Iran economically is economic warfare waged instigated by israel united states and saudi arabia right so it is warfare so people protesting in iran are they protesting against the iranian government or are they protesting against the sanctions that are being put on iran is it are they protesting the economic warfare being waged on them by us saudi arabia and israel or are they protesting the 300 percent overnight rise in gas prices because the oligarchs are greedy the protests in iran have a different cause than the protests in chile in chile what we're seeing is people protesting the fair hike and it, that was just a straw that broke the camel's back these protests that started the, they're about to rewrite the constitution that wasn't because there were sanctions put on chile on the contrary corporations have been allowed to loot Chile for a number of decades, right? There was no sanctions on Chile. That was because the government in Chile was greedy SOBs, right? Billionaires that are looting the resources of their own people, right? Different game, different game. Trump is friendly with them because he's trying to uh, resolve it economically if possible. Obama just bombed everything. Chicho, you ever thought of taking 10 minute break midway through the stream? No. <laughs> Sleepy waves. When I, when I do these, I go pretty hardcore, man. <laughs> that just happened apparently. I've, I've thought about doing two hours, taking an hour break, doing two hours, taking an hour break, doing two hours, taking an hour break. And the odds are we'll do this. And the odds are we'll do this when the Assange case rolls further. Okay. Interesting. That just happened apparently. Why would they do that? They should have enough oil for their own use. Um, Racer kill. I, I haven't heard about the demonstration with 300% increase and stuff. But one of the reasons they might be doing this is because they can't get the equipment to fix refineries they can't get the chemicals they need to refine oils they're not a closed system right they do need materials and equipment to come in from the outside world for them to continue to function just like any other nation there is no nation on this planet that is independently they could close everything off and they could function independently so iran needs equipment needs resources needs chemicals needs food needs a lot of things to maintain their economy so if they can't get their hands on there if they have downtime prices go up right so he's solving terrorism by giving them weapons uh do the black ops still exist oh yeah for sure sleepy waves didn't you didn't even realize that was a thing oh huge black ops all over the place one a lot of the black ops that's happening is it's just funding going to mercenary groups like blackwater right this the person that started blackwater he's still around and he's bigger than ever right i think he's living in dubai with thousands of mercenaries and 
billions of dollars worth of weapons and stuff they're they're waging war on behalf of u.s governments and corporations around the globe right and it continues to bomb more so there's that it was 50 percent increase to uh, trump 2020 <laughs> i personally think trump's going to win the next election right i, I there's there's a word that hillary's going to run right that that's the that's that's the final nail in the coffin for the democratic party and trump in right there's a very likely possibility trump wins 2020. it is not 50 it's 300 percent relative to iran and iranian news sources are not wrong yeah yeah it could be 300 percent right even if it's a thousand percent why is that happening what's the cause most iranians know that the cause is not because of their leadership it's because of the sanctions I've barely met any Iranians that consider that, like most Iranians don't like their leadership, right? Their government. Most Iranians don't. Just like any country. Most people in their own countries don't like their governments, right? But even those people that don't like the Iranian government know that the reason that the Iranian people are suffering right now is because of the sanction and has been because of the sanctions for the last at least 10 15 years or so initially for the first 15 years after the revolution first 20 years after the revolution yeah the iranian government was brutal they killed a lot of people right when you're out of the argument 1000 toman to 3000 toman yeah and a uh, troy you have to also consider the Toman and Toman is the Ameri the Iranian dollar, right? So the Iranian currency five years ago, five years ago or so, th around three thousand, not even two thousand five hundred Tomans, let's say three thousand Tomans got was for one dollar, right? So the ratio of the exchange was three thousand to one, right? If you go back 20 years, it was like six hundred to one, right? So it's devaluing the currency right but as soon as trump came in and these sanctions start kicking up the toman went from like three thousand tomans to one dollar to like I, I last time i checked it it peaked at like seventeen thousand tomans to one dollar and it stabilized around eleven thousand tomans to one dollar right so a lot of that and food prices increase and everything increased is because of the sanctions that's so strange what's the idea and why would they increase it so fast instead of successively um what are we talking about racer kill da, 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 da. it's just what it is maybe oh this is the increase yeah it's this the sanctions has a lot to do with it the currency is being devalued i'm not going to waste my time with people who can't substantiate their arguments continually so that's just not that. i'm going to skip uh, conversations that are with specific people oh wow i missed a lot of chat so i'm going to scroll down a little bit gang if there's anything that's addressed to me please let me know i agree that obama is a war criminal but if trump openly explicitly advocates for war crimes can we please as a society stop arguing over whether trump is a war criminal he openly advocates for war crimes yeah he's a war criminal people already blocked the streets in many cities with their cars to protest and put banks on fire in one city a couple of people are already shot dead by government thugs uh, plenty of videos are being posted on Twitter is this happening right now Troy I haven't checked into it yet if a child is shooting at you how is that not an enemy combatant how is that not an enemy combatant uh, because it's a child soldier right just because you define a child soldier as an enemy combatant it doesn't mean you have the right to do whatever you want to that child that's united nations that's international laws right child soldiers should be treated as children not adult soldiers not in the same light obama administration treated child soldiers and did, as did the bush administration as does the obama administration they treat child soldiers as if they're grown-ups they tortured 14 year old children in guantanamo bay and black sites all over the world that's a war crime i'll keep it small can you summarize your thoughts on the uk labor party okay 
they have gone hardcore into socialism okay tank we'll deal with it thanks for bringing it up by the way i am uh, not sure to why it increased da, 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 da. i'm gonna skip those the biggest state sponsor of terrorism in the united states of government yep they have funded the proxy wars seems super cool to me to say that the presidents are nobodies just puppets and then blame them for the atrocities that um, open under the government uh kupchery i don't think trump calls the shots on every everything i just like Obama didn't call the shots and everything, just like Bush Jr. didn't call the shots and everything. However, they are representing that institution that is doing these things. So this should be held liable, right? Um, but personally, I think Trump is more powerful than Obama, calls more shots to a certain degree than Obama in regards to economics. Okay, Obama was just a good little lapdog that did the bidding of Wall Street and the military industrial complex. Trump at least says he's not a good liar. He's, he, 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 he's he, he, really like you can't compare them. Obama was a brilliant liar. Trump is not even close, right? So he plays to his um, strong points, strong suits telling the truth right the way he twists it right because he cares about money and he focuses on the economics so they are puppets of the the institutions but they should also be held accountable for doing the bidding of their puppet masters what is Hamas or what is Homus Hamas is uh, it's just the organization that opposes um, the, the, the origins of Hamas are, are, are crazy. Basically, uh, the, it was Israeli funded. Hamas was like, it's crazy. Like, if you look at Hamas, it was Israeli funded. And then it got away from them because they were trying to oppose Fatah, right? And then slowly became more militant, right? And they won the elections in Gaza. But the Western powers obviously said we don't recognize these elections, even though they're democratic, right? So they don't recognize democracy if the people being voted in are not who they want to be voted in, right? Look at Bolivia, look at Gaza, look at Palestine, look at Venezuela, look at Chile, look at wherever, right? Petrodollar. Petrodollar is huge. Why would sanctions matter? Iran produces more than enough oil for their own resources. The materials, the, the equipment, it's again we're not an island on our own too much chat today lots of chat today how do you know so much wisdom i've just been following politics for a long time this is just stuff i that I'm, think i know i might be wrong on some of these things that i'm saying is there a particular solution of uh destination we're trying to get to in this discussion or are we all just airing out laundry and comparing a part of the whole thing is airing out laundry it, just a platform to chit chat think no destination beyond anything on current uh, events though i do like the idea of getting a whiteboard out and hitting a um, verdict at the end of it really okay think you know what uh drop in the idea in discord and one of these live streams will decide to i mean we're doing it for assange for sure right uh, but we can definitely pick a topic for example brexit if you want and talk about it spe specifically just brexit and try to come up with a decision i think that's a great idea by the way increasing petrol prices doesn't just go towards the oil business it's finances the state da, 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 da. and obviously it does some things which are trump well okay i'm gonna scroll down guys and i'm gonna go to the labor party as tink uh, just regarding brexit so sorry about skipping some stuff understood doesn't get better than chicho on a whiteboard okay that might be a good idea to bad thing though da, 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 da. hi infidel <laughs> the emotes are easy to read <laughs> the trend i hate the most is uh what anti-trumpers get mad when trump isn't hawkish enough yeah it's crazy racer kill they the only time in trump's presidency which everybody praised him was when he was bombing Syria. 
and it's come out that he bombed Syria for no reason because there was no chemical attack right that tells you what the propagandists are all about anybody that still watches CNN ABC CNBC PBS blah 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 all these Western corporate propagandists stop watching them it's garbage Trump choosing not to patrol with ships next to Russia border uh, to these people this means Trump is yeah one of the other things you have to praise Trump about he tries to make a deal with Russia make peace with Russia ridiculously important while the Obama administration under Hillary with Hillary Clinton they try to wage war with Russia to me anybody that tries to start a war with Russia should be kicked out of their ass right the insanity insanity right and who, why did even people support the crap easy to get distracted by chat what was the idea okay labor party in brexit i'm down to the chat i'll try to stay up with it uh but let's talk about the labor party in uh in the uk brexit what's the difference between neoliberalism neoconservatism okay sleepy ways let's deal with the labor party first okay okay now you're just sprouting history so both world wars were not caused i love this chat it's just it's fantastic nice plant collection thank you uh, clear joker we actually if you do a little search chicho plants i have a video out there like an hour and a half or two hours or maybe longer of showing you my plants uh it's really good <laughs> it's really good how are you doing chosen chicho how's it going cyanide how are you doing i still haven't finished reading your whole article yet i hit the two uh little hiccups that i sent you and then i stopped I was assuming you're going to make some corrections and then send me the uh the corrections the corrected uh, version text to speech reader i didn't finish reading it i've been meaning to i've just been caught up with stuff man no history okay labor party jeremy corbyn okay tink straight off the bat right now okay you have a choice between boris johnson Farage and um, Corbyn, <laughs> right? The Labour Party. Okay. Can you confirm that for me? Okay. Because I don't care who else is running. Okay. Right now in the UK, if you just want my opinion, who I would vote for, I would vote for Corbyn, the Labour Party. And I'll tell you why I would do it. Number one, he has called the Bolivian coup a coup. He's come out, and as far as I know, yes, that's the choice. There's also Lib Dem, but it's kind of a wasted vote. Okay. As far as I know, right? And people here, please, if you're in the US, please let me know. I haven't bothered looking in because I really don't care that much. But what has... Um, uh, what's his name jeez uh, all these names i'm forgetting um the <laughs> it's like forgetting the bush's name uh, the the person running um wait who called it a coup uh no in in the united states uh, running for democrats the older guy that ran against hillary and they took they 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 screwed him over the 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 power elite the money said that hillary's gonna yeah bernie sanders <sighs> wow <laughs> no not romney <laughs> nice though meant well. as far as i know bernie sanders let me know if bernie sanders has commented regarding the bolivian coup as far as i know he hasn't said anything regarding Bolivian coup. So that should tell you something about Bernie Sanders, right? Even AOC, which I'm not a huge fan of, to tell you the truth, uh, Alexandro Orto Cortez, right? She's okay. I'm okay with disruptive innovation coming in, right? But some of the stuff she says is crazy, right? <laughs> but even she came out and said, Bolivia is a coup, right? So Jeremy Corbyn came out and said, Bolivia is a coup western governments should leave bolivians alone that's 
major right on okay the second thing jeremy corbyn has come out and supported julian assange and has publicly stated that he would not extradite julian assange to the united states that's number two everything else is irrelevant this is why when he supports julian assange and says julian assange cannot be extradited to the united states it means he supports freedom learning freedom of information and that he is not a puppet of the united states okay that's a huge plus when he comes out and says the u.s government and the western governments are conducting a coup in bolivia it means that he does not support the military industrial complex and economic warfare huge plus those are two of the biggest things in anybody's agenda when it comes to global politics and choosing voting for a representative for yourself corbyn is anti-war great socialist great will put brexit to another vote bad i agree with you there tink that's the bad part but as far as i see it the conservatives are not going to do a brexit they're not going to do a brexit it's not going to happen right the well, farage was with saying that uh he told how many of his um uh, people running for the brexit party to drop out of a race so the conservatives could win those areas i think 100 plus uh party members he told them to drop out of the race or he ordered them to drop out of the race so the conservatives would win so farage is he's trying to cut a deal with the conservatives to do a, a brexit but it's not going to happen so the conservatives aren't going to do a brexit right and he hiked taxes no bloody idea uh want to see how he actually wants to raise all of his funds before i vote for him tink i agree with you it's a good idea to figure out where they're going to bring all this money in the question is none of those people are telling you how they're going to do it right so there's nobody that right now that's running for the government except farage but farage flipped not i won't say flipped but he tried to compromise with the conservatives no man if you got the upper hand with vile globalists like boris johnson and his like right and you can deal a major blow to them you do it okay you don't cut a deal with the devil you chop off one of its heads right farage made a mistake a big mistake right that's my take Corbin is reaching for straws, maybe. But those two things say a lot about his character. Okay. Sanders has completely avoided Julian Assange. Agreed, Sinai. Where's Sanders on Julian Assange? Right? Where is Sanders on dramatically reducing US military militarism around the globe? He said it, right? But he hasn't really attacked. The u.s military budget which is what is it over 55 percent of discre discretionary spending dude these arguments really shouldn't be done da, 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 da. i'm gonna look for well, what are some good modern books on the military industrial complex good modern books on the military industrial complex i haven't read any good modern books on a military industrial complex but if you want um on u.s domestic sleepy waves if you want u.s domestic policy i would say uh, days of destruction days of revolt by chris hedges and joe sacco right i've mentioned that before and we've talked about it during our book club events right uh, as far as you don't you really don't need any modern books on military industrial complex pick up anything from howard zinn right uh gore vidal's perpetual war for perpetual peace it's you know it's like 20 years old okay and it's a very short read sleepy waves i would recommend that actually okay it touches on domestic policy u.s domestic policy and u.s foreign policy so gore vidal perpetual war for perpetual peace i would recommend start with that it's like this big i have it in my bookcase if we're in bookcase i pull it out and show it to you right um you could read it in a couple of days a week if you're a slow reader right cancel brexit or you want brexit personally i think the uk should have brexit brexit full brexit and i'm pretty sure tink is on the same line uh that's decentralization and i'm pro decentralization 
Okay, I'm going to scroll down a little bit more. If you guys actually want me to read one of the chat, please put at Chicho Live. That way it pops out so I can read it. If it's directed towards me, just because I want to make sure I'm staying up to the chat. Okay. Ah, but Corbin has an air of ignorance uh, that to me suggests a broken economy that'll take 30 years to fix. He almost goes too far, promises free everything, and to drop the voting age to 16. Seems like madness. Okay, here's the thing, Tank. I think the voting, voting age should be dropped, personally. Okay. Uh, 18, what's the voting age in the, in the UK right now? I think it's 18, right? So why not drop it down to 16? Get people participating in the political system earlier right which is a good thing to do really it might have some short-term hiccups but i think over the long term because i i like to play the long game over the long term it'll it'll be better right as far as a broken economy think uk economy is a disaster it's a disaster as is most western economies europe is going to go into a major recession if not a depression okay the uk is is following suit so i don't think anybody from those all the parties involved has any idea of how to revamp the uk economy other than brexit i think brexit will revamp the uk economy after i don't know how many years after a short period of a major hiccup right in the long game brexit is great for the uk as far as i'm concerned right because they can make deals with countries independently or groups of countries independently right their hands aren't tied right but the conservatives are not going for brexit farage has failed is i have respect for the guy man uh, i don't agree with everything i think he's whatever but i agree with the way he has tackled the Brexit situation. But he rolled over. He didn't roll over. I think he's just tired of that game, right? He shouldn't have told those people not to run to give the Conservatives the vote, right? He shouldn't have done it. What a mistake. What a mistake, right? But um, Julian Assange came out and said, we're doing a coup. Very, very positive. Or Italy, for that matter. Da, 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 Chicho. What's the difference between neoliberalism and neoconservatism? Okay. I'll have to look these up. Like, really, sleepy waves. I don't have the direct thing, but I'll give you my general feel for it, right? Neoconservatism has a major ideology behind it, right? Major ideology behind it. And it's really about brute force militarism okay so there's a huge aspect of military intervention when it comes to neoconservatism okay and there's a born-again christian evangelical aspect to neoconservatism as well as a hardcore zionist agenda back backing neoconservatism okay neoliberalism is approaching empire building and they're both about empire building Neoliberalism approaches it from an economic perspective, right? Privatizing everything. We need to be covertly wage overthrow governments, as does neoconservatism as well, right? So neoliberalism approaches the empire from an economic standpoint to a certain degree, and neoconservatism approaches it more from the frontal of military intervention, right? It doesn't mean neoliberalism does not support military intervention. It does. And it doesn't mean neoconservatism doesn't support economic warfare. It does. But one leans a little bit this way and one leans a little bit that way. That's my understanding of it, right? For me, I just recognize the garbage when I see it. And as far as I'm concerned, they're both garbage, right? Chicho. 18 right now 18 right now okay so that's the voting age in the uk i don't know man i had no bloody clue about any of this till a few years ago teenagers will just vote for whoever promises the most i have more faith in teenagers i work with a lot of teenagers 
really, I work with a lot of teenagers, as you know, right? Uh, the ones that really don't care, follow the politics, they won't vote, right? Really, the percentage of 16-year-olds that will vote is, is, is not going to be huge. However, they will vote in groups, right? The reason that they will vote in groups is because 16-year-olds really don't have a mature mind, as do a lot of 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 year olds I've talked to, right? What's the ratio? I don't know. I've talked to a lot of 60, 70 year olds and 50, 30 year olds that, and people my age, like 50, that are clueless as to how global economy works. And like I talked to them about Julian Assange and they, they, they think he's the devil. I'm like, dude, you're ridiculous. I can't say it. You're you're a simpleton, right? I talk to 16-year-olds that know that are online. They know who Julian Assange is and they support him 100% and WikiLeaks, right? So there are things that 16-year-olds are not aware of and there are things that 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 year olds aren't aware of, right? So every age group, political class has certain things they contribute to our society, right? They have a understanding of things that matter, okay? The problem with 16 year olds is gonna be that there's gonna be centralized institutions that are gonna to try to manipulate them. Greta Thunberg being one of them, putting Greta Thunberg there and a lot of kids saying, yay, our savior is here, right? Mind you, I don't think a lot of them think that way. I don't, right now, I don't have any students that consider Greta Thor Thornburg to be anything other than a celebrity, right? They don't, they don't consider her to be representing them, right? So there's a lot of things going on, but with 16 year olds, there is the possibility where centralized institutions will start forming or organizations to control these 16 year olds to get them to vote as a block. Well, sure, there are these institutions that exist that get senior citizens to vote as a block. So why not even the, even the playing field, right? I think that's important. And it sort of puts more emphasis on us as individuals. If we think kids are being used for political agendas that is going to harm them in the long run, then hey, maybe we'll do or people will start doing more streams and organizing their own community structures and organizations to counter these people that are hijacking 16 year olds minds right so it will dramatically i think change the face of our societies if the voting age is dropped and i don't think that's a bad thing i think that's a good thing really i think that's a good thing because the road we're on right now in the present system is ridiculous it's not a good place to be right i'm scrolling down let's check it out olive uh, could you explain the term that divided up the branches of ideology used to categorize the uh, specter of parties and elections i ask because it's hard to draw parallels between say norway and the u.s the conservative democrats in the u.s are considered the most conservative you get in norway hope that made sense yeah all of it makes sense and we can't do it globally right so conservatives conservative in canada may mean something else than in the uk may mean something else than in norway may mean something else than in the united states or other places in the world liberal may mean something else in canada norway us so for me i don't really attach myself to these words of describing certain parties right that's why i have a hard time finding the exact definition the difference between neoconservatives and neoliberal right i'm going by the definition of the united states or my understanding of those parties in the united states right so for example democratic party in the united states and um, Republican Party in the United States. Well, the Democratic Party in the United States right now, if you go back 40 years, it would be considered a hardcore 
Republican Party leaning way to the right, right? So these terms and parties and definitions really lose meaning once you do the calculus, once you apply time to them, and once you move from one region to another region. The best thing to do, Olive, I think, is to look at their platforms to see what they're offering, what they're presenting. What are the main top five main things that they stand for? Because and you have and we have to hold these people accountable for what they're standing for, right? What their platforms are. A lot of these politicians come into power and they do the opposite of what they're they told people they were going to do. Obama is case in point. Trump, he's he came in to reduce militarism. He hasn't started any hot wars right ground wars with any country but he is waging war on venezuela iran and bolivia right so that's three wars that is hurting many many people right so i would personally stay away from the parties per se i would look at the platforms i would look at the people running there's probably really good independent people running in norway that represent the ideals are Norwegians than the parties, right? Because if you look at the UK right now, the conservatives don't represent the majority of the uh, British population, the UK population. Uh, Farage's party, not the majority, no. The Labour Party, probably more than the conservatives. Most of the people in the UK are working class, right? And a lot of their jobs have been decimated. So the Labour Party wants to is pro-union and I'm pro-union collective bargaining is the only chip workers have right and by the way this is coming from a person that like I'm pro-union I've never belonged to a union I do consulting work right I'm work for hire right but just because my lifestyle is different it doesn't mean under I understand that there's corporations central institutions out there that are destroying the workforce and when they destroy the workforce for the benefit of the corporations let living standards in a society drop right so you don't have to belong to a union to support unions you don't have to be a working person to support unions you don't have to want to go into a union to support unions you have to understand that collective bargaining is the main chip main power that we have against centralized power and what centralization what centralized power wants to do is divide and conquer us right that's why they categorize all these different ideas and different different terms and classes right we are all the same 99.9999 percent of us are all the same right there's a very small percentage that have something wrong in their neural network that they consider us to be cattle right or serfs i play the stocks thank you for the twitch prime sub thank you thank you i'm scrolling down guys if there's anything that chicho there's chicho uh okay so i shouldn't get hung up in the terms they are dynamic and don't apply on a global uh outlook 100 percent olive really uh I, and when i was younger i did get caught up in the terminology too oh this 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 and then i realized that doesn't mean crap right because uh political parties get hijacked like people are still supporting the democratic party because they think they're for the working man what are you crazy <laughs> it's corrupt very corrupt very corrupt Democratic Samurai. Oh, there's Chomsky's face. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, there's uh, these are. Oh, there's Edward Snowden. Right on. Is that Edward Snowden? Sexy Sam. Oh, just me ranting. You didn't miss much. Okay, Utah Jazz. Utah Jazz is such a hero, blocking people. Great debater. Are you? Oh man, now I want to go back and read these things. What the hell? Only third person I've ever blocked. By the way, what's going on? What? 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 <laughs> Who's this guy? Mike Frumpa? I don't know Mike Frumpa. <laughs> What's this guy? 
Ross. <laughs> hey, <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay, what do we got? Uh, okay, I've caught up. I'm down to the bottom of the chat now. Hi, perbs. Uh, top fiver, how you doing? I didn't even notice you were here. Jeez, Louise. Uh, I know quite a few, though I am from uh, live in Texas like you. Okay, so you're caught. What do you think of the massive wave of immigrants that are coming to Sweden? Um, in what regard, what do I think of them? Uh, they're human beings. And the main reason that they're coming to Sweden is because European countries, Western powers, Canada, United States, Europe, uh, mainly Canada, United States, and Europe have bombed the crap out of their nations and they're escaping death and destruction, right? Qaddafi, Zart, Qaddafi warned the world that if Libya was raised to the ground, right, was destroyed, if NATO destroyed it, then the doors would open up and there'd be millions of refugees coming from Africa to Europe. The world didn't care. Well, I shouldn't say the world didn't care. The Western powers did not care. The UK, France, Italy, Canada, United States, they destroyed Libya, right? Who's responsible for the mass migration of refugees and asylum seekers into Europe? Sarkozy, Cameron, Obama, uh, Harper, and uh, uh, who, I forget, uh, who, who was the Italian? Uh, leader at the time when they were bombing um, Libya, right? That's my take. Okay, that's my take. I think it's good. Should others take responsibility as well? I think the Western powers need to take responsibility. I think Zart, how Western countries, Europe, stop mass migration of refugees, asylum seekers, those who are fleeing war, right? I think the way you stop that wave coming in, and it's going to get more and more, by the way, right? The way you stop that right now, right now, you arrest Cameron, you arrest Blair, you, you arrest Sarkozy, you arrest any leader that was in power when they invaded Iraq, started a war in Syria, destroyed Libya, armed Saudi Arabia to annihilate Yemen. You arrest all the leaders, put them at the Hague, war trial, war, uh, war crimes trials, because the Hague, it looks like they're only taking African leaders and charging them with war crimes. What about the Western leaders and charging them with war crimes? Charge them with war crimes, telecast that around the globe, on TV, apologizing to the world that the Western powers allowed these leaders to kill millions of people and displace tens of millions and tell the world that you will never do it again. What you will see is slowly people will stop coming that towards Europe and they'll start going back to their home nations to build their lives again. Because I can guarantee you, man, majority of people that are migrating to other nations, they would rather not go. They wish, they wish they could stay in their own countries. Look at Honduras, look at Bolivia, look at Venezuela, look at El Salvador, right? Most of them would rather stay in their own nations speak their own language, be with their friends and family, live their culture, dance, sing, cook food, right? Educate their children, then packing a bag and going on a multi-thousand dollar, a multi-thousand kilometer miles of dangerous territory to go to a nation where the people there don't want them right? Really, the only way this mass migration stops to the Western world, if Western leaders that committed war crimes 
are put on trial, including Cheney, Bush, Rumsfeld, Wolfowitz, and the, the like, right? And the Hillary's and the Obamas, right? I beat cancer last week at age 24, feeling amazing. Dude, top fiver. What? What? Probably don't want to go deep into it, man. All I can tell you is, uh, man, more power to you. More power to you, right? What you went through, and and this is something you're going to have to keep an eye on for a long time to come, forever, really, right? As should most of us maintain our health, right? Wow. The knowledge, the wisdom, the education, the understanding of how the world functions and what is important in the world, uh, you know more than people who haven't gone through that kind of trauma, really. And man, you must have realized who some of your amazing friends are and how important your family is and the people that you should really be spending time with and putting energy into the perspective you have i that you have right now i wish i don't wish what you have to go through on anyone but i wish um that everyone had the perspective that you have uh, now after the fact and when is the next on stream uh, all of um your question does it cost to sub on bit shoot no and uh, when is the next Assange live stream? As soon as I upload the, the previous Assange stream we had, what I have to do is re record the reading we did of the Guantanamo Bay files. Okay, I just got to do it calmer and I'm going to load that up and then I'm going to load up the Assange stream. And most likely, we're going to do another Assange stream next week. Okay, uh, I'll figure out the time. I'm just behind on on everything I'm scrolling down guys um, ch -ch -ch -ch. Randall how are you doing how's life thank you very much for the tier one sub and welcome welcome to another stream I'm down at the bottom of chat gang I just have to get caught up uh, so uh, I think it's important for me again if there's anything that I missed that you were addressing towards me please just put at Chicho live just direct it towards me and I'll I'll talk about it oh no another troll oh who's a troll where's a troll do we have a troll I think we got a couple of mods here if there is a troll let me know and I'll read their comments and How's the sound, by the way? I messed around with the with the system. By the way, I'm I'm probably missed the, some follows and subs and stuff like this. Thank you for the follows. Thank you for the subs. If you're new here, if you're, uh, you know, you came here through YouTube through BitChute, and if you're just stumbling on our channel, welcome and thank you for participating. What's tomorrow? See, there is a stream on Thursday. Uh, tomorrow's stream is going to be more politics, current events okay and thursday oh the thursday one i have to take out uh there won't be one on thursday uh, sorry i haven't fixed that out yet um what happened with twitch they took out the events page i don't know why i used to be able to write the events and say oh events this this is the list of stuff we're gonna do and i don't see them rolling out a substitute for that uh, i haven't looked too deep into it but they twitch took out the events pages right which is ridiculous. I don't know why they did it. Um, so from now on, if you want to know the streams coming up, I think the best thing to do is either go to Discord and look at the schedule uh, or go to the Patreon or Subscribe Star page 
uh, Patreon is more active. Subscribe Star, I'm posting everything that I'm doing on Subscribe on Subscribe Star or Subscribe Star. I'm pasting everything that I'm doing on Patreon, but we have no subscribers there on Subscribe Star. I'm waiting to, for us to get the first person. That way, I can dig down into that platform a little bit more, right? So the best thing to do, Olive, if you want to know what the next streams are, is go to the Patreon page under posts, and the top post is what we got lined up or discord and the schedule and those are the streams that we have i'm not sure why they took it out i don't know i don't know taco how are you doing welcome welcome you're just trolling at this point no sticks arman is easy sticks arman i don't think he's a troll dante talking about national interest as if they aren't literally in the definition of nationalism um dante i think national interest everybody has national interest it's like having family interest right could you elaborate on brexit being financially uh oops financially positive for great britain uh basically it decentralizes it right what it does uh, Ank ankma what it does it will cut the cords that the uk has to get everything they need to do approved by Brussels. That includes the UK's budget, right? So when UK passes a budget internally, they have to get it approved by Brussels. And Brussels has said that every country that belongs to the EU cannot uh, spend more than a certain percentage on different things and whatnot, right? They have their own criteria, right? Well, what if a country wants to spend more on their citizens what if all of a sudden you know there's some major problems in the country and they need to spend more on their citizens what if there's dramatic serious uh, climate effects taking place there's mass floodings everywhere so their budget for the next five years is going to be in the negative because they have to rebuild right well according to brussels they have to approve that and according to the terms that they have they can't do that so people don't have independence countries right now do not have independence of uh from the eu and we all know who runs the eu the corporations run the eu and the corporations really don't give a rat's ass about people in the uk people in uh france people in italy people in any eu country or any country per se right so why are citizens of the uk allowing their government to be run by corporations when their country is being decimated labor force is being decimated the uh, industrial uh, uh, production uh, capabilities have been decimated by these same corporations right at the beginning it's going to be a little bit of a hiccup really but just like anything if you're about to do a major change major upgrade to your life just imagine moving right you're in this house you're going to move somewhere else right somewhere bigger somewhere better with better better water better air you get to decide you when you're going to go to sleep on your own time when you're going to when you're going to go online what games you're going to play who you're going to interact with your own free will right but that move is going to take a certain amount of effort it's going to hit your finances a little bit but in the long run in the limit you'll be better off that's that's what basically it is the uk is has a little bit of advantage right you guys have your own currency those who are going with the euro they're pretty much screwed right okay olive and let me know if uh, if you have any questions i gotta take out the thursday i keep on forgetting to remove the little tag there like end them right top fiver thank you for the kind words you're absolutely right uh, i feel as if every day after i was cleared is just extra gifted life and i have a newfound thirst to do great things in the world awesome top fiver awesome 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 really gang uh one bit of advice i can give you okay anybody that has dealt with traumatic health issues right that oh i was on the verge go this way or go that way and they've been hit and they've lifted themselves up right they've had the air knocked out of them and they've lifted themselves up 
and they have been given the opportunity to live their life, continue their life, recommendation, the one thing you should do is look at what they're doing, how they're living their lives, and take a little bit away from that and incorporate it into your life. It will dramatically improve your life. As long as they're dealing with it in a positive light, and you can definitely deal with it in a positive life. And that's the key, right? Once you start dealing with things in a positive light, when you remove the anxiety and you realize what life is about, your health will improve, your 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 your, your well-being will improve, right? Basically, look at people who have had traumatic events in their lives, how they've dealt with it, and incorporate some of the positive aspects of that into your life. Chicho, can you read up on the comments later and see that he's trolling? Stick Um At this point, I'm starting to believe that you're indoctrinated and have been uh, told about how bad nationalism is. Uh, Dante, here's the thing. If people want to think about nationalism, they have a right to have a nationalistic perspective, right? Uh, I may agree with it, I may not agree with it, but I don't think that's trolling. And sticks are, man. I would say this. If you're in disagreement with someone and the same issue is coming up, right? Then please don't push that agenda, right? That ends up being trolling, as Dante says, right? If you've agreed to disagree, then just go your separate ways. Don't, don't keep on pushing right why would you do that it's not a positive thing to do right it's not a positive thing to do at all right and it's it's not respectful really if you want to be national if you if you believe in nationalism sure go ahead but nationalism has certain definition certain understanding based on where people are from right and what experiences they've had and depending on certain group of people that have calling themselves nationalists that are pure outright racist pigs right i've encountered some of them right so do you really want to categorize yourself with them right you have to appreciate that language over time changes right if <clears throat> If a certain party is being hijacked, certain word is being hijacked, why would you hold on to that word? Like, for example, when you talk to people, when I talk to people, they say, oh, I'm a Democrat. Well, do they really know what that means? Like, for me, if anyone says I'm a hardcore Democrat, I consider them to be pretty well, uninformed, right? Or idealistic there's a there's a word for it uh, associate associate oh man i gotta find this for you guys now uh, okay i'm gonna spend like two minutes trying to find something okay uh, hold on let me find this one thing uh, because i can't paraphrase it i have to find it uh da -da 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 and I'll do a Speedy Gonzales version of it. And I'm going to link you to something. Okay. And Dante, watch this interview. And Sticks Armanan, watch this interview. And everyone in chat, watch this interview. Okay. Oh, let me find it. Oh, here we go. Oh, is that it? Uh, da, 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 da. There we go. Okay. Here is the link, okay? This is Max Blumenthal referring to an interview by Aaron Mate that he had with Gabo Mate, okay? That's the tweet that he made, okay? And here is the interview. Let me make sure it's here. 
yeah it's here so here's the interview on gray zone project and i'm going to read you the sentence okay i'm going to read you the sentence and this is ridiculously important and sticks are mana please pay attention to this okay so max blumenthal's tweet is this fantastic discussion on the shattering of illusion and the psychological release uh release so many jews experience as they emerge from the mental cap captivity of zionism the second part of max blumenthal's tweet is this gabo quoting gabo and this is the one you have to really pay attention to okay don't be afraid to be disillusioned it's better than being illusioned and don't be afraid to be disidentified okay brilliant this identified is the key here okay if you continue to identify yourself as someone that only has the beliefs associated with a certain organization then you are forfeiting your right to be a human being you're identifying with a centralized institution and that centralized institution doesn't give a rat's ass about you and can be hijacked, right? And can morph over time to mean com something completely different. Do not do that. You are doing yourself a disservice. Do not identify yourself, your being with a certain ideology. Okay. How did this turn into that I'm a racist now? I don't think you, uh, sticks are I don't think you're a racist uh, nationalist. I don't know if that was associated directed to me or not. Okay. The discussion was about whether nationalism or militarism causes more wars. Nothing more and nothing less. Uh, nationalism, militarism. I think militarism personally. I don't think nationalism causes more wars. Nationalism, uh, if we define national, I don't want to define national because nationalism it could mean many things militarism has really one definition way militarism right <laughs> waging war right nationalism has broad definition in my opinion okay yeah dante sticks arman i don't think i should talk to each other personally that's my take i'm skipping i'm gonna jump over this thing okay uh ankma thanks for the answer i'm curious about another thing if you don't mind given your view on the corporations being the real decision makers on international level i'd imagine you would prefer to see someone like bernie sanders in office to fight back would you uh, compare to who that's like it has to be compared to who compared to trump bernie sanders trump yeah bernie sanders Bernie Sanders, Hillary Clinton, most definitely Bernie Sanders, right? Like, really, Bernie Sanders made a huge mistake rolling over for the Democratic Party. He did what Max Blumenthal or Gabo Mate said don't do. He identified himself with the Democratic Party. He needs to disidentify himself, right? Because he did a disservice to his followers he was wrong he handed he he but one positive aspect of it he disillusioned many people right that were under the illusion that the democratic party had their best interest in mind did you see that china is taking over Kenya's largest port. Um, I think they're also building. Uh, I know China's building ports everywhere and uh, resources everywhere. China, like what's going on right now in Bolivia, has a lot to do with the United States and China, right? Because China was cutting a deal with Bolivia to grab their lithium. China cut a deal with Italy to build a multi billion dollar port in Italy, right? So, yeah, China's tentacles are going all over the place. It's business economics china is one gigantic corporation and is behaving exactly the same way as u.s corporate corporations individually have acted around the globe right 
Uh, Utah Jazz, I disagree with Warren. I don't think uh, Warren is a good choice. But any damn, and 90%, 99% of GOP honesty would be much better than Trump. Uh, I like the honesty that Trump, weird thing to say, right? Trump has introduced to the dialogue of US foreign policy. He has come out and admitted that the United, Mili United States military is about extracting resources from other nations. No other president, as far as I know, has ever admitted that fact, right? Do you think Bernie could keep being a senator if he uh, disidentified himself from the Democratic Party? Yes. Red Theus, I think that would be one of the most amazing things, Dis disruptive innovations, disruptive events to happen in the United States. And in the long run, it would be ridiculously beneficial for citizens of the United States. Just imagine if Bernie Sanders came out and said the Democratic Party is corrupt to the core. I made a mistake of handing over the party's nomination to Hillary Clinton. I was delusional, right? I thought I could change it from within. And once trying and hitting these obstacles, I realized that there's no way the Democratic Party could be revamped. So I'm forming, forming my own party and I'm going to run it as an independent, call it whatever you want, right? The, call it the disillusioned party, right? And run as an independent. I think he would get in. I think you would see more people doing the same thing. And at some point, some of these people might get together, create a third party, create a fourth party, create a fifth party. Working under the Democrats, will get the citizens of the United States nowhere. Guess what buck I ordered a couple of days ago. Oh, what did you order, Olive? What did you order? Uh, Days of Destruction, Days of Revolt by Chris Hedges and Joe Sacco. Uh, no, Guru Lesherbach. <laughs> Nassim Nicholas Taleb's uh, uh, Anti-Fragile, or what are we reading? Uh, Skin in the Game. Or, oh, could it be fantasy? What did you order? Dune. Did you order Dune? I gotta, I gotta find out. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll find out when I scroll down. Have you ever been to China? No. Also, did you know they're also going to build a canal through night? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I knew about that, uh, Sleepy Waves. And the reason they're doing this, they will, they announced that uh, it's going to be parallel canal, basically parallel. Another option for people to go through this canal than the Panama Canal. And the reason they're doing this is they're going to assume that this conflict between the United States and China is going to get harder and harder, bigger and bigger, right? And at some point, the United States is going to deny Chinese ships access through the Panama Canal. Just the same way they've denied Iranian ships, certain Iranian ships access through the uh, Suez Canal, right? So China has to build that canal to make sure that lane is not blocked off, right? It's economic warfare. Running third party is the dumbest thing anyone can do. It's just impossible with the current voting system and no, nobody running as independent is going to get in. Uh, Dante, maybe not the first time, maybe not the second time. 10 years down the road, five years down the road, maybe 15 years down the road. Just imagine if Ross Perot, right? He dropped out. Why did he drop out? He had a lot of votes, man, right? He wasn't going to win, but he had a movement going. Did they blackmail him? What happened? Was there an Epstein event happening, right? Just imagine if Ross Perot didn't drop out in the 1990s. Where would the United States be now? If there was a viable third party candidate that was maybe not in the president's office, but in Congress, right? I don't think third party is the dumbest thing. I think that's one of the brilliant, one of the best things. Infidel, thank you very much for the tier one sub. Okay. Dune, yes, Olive. There's some great books out there. Dune, oh, Olive, you're in for a treat. Wow. You, how'd you get? Dune is. Dune is one of the greatest reads you will ever have. 
all of is amazing 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 I, and i'm glad you got doing instead of the other ones well the other ones are great but they're politics right yet we have to fill our lives full of uh wonderment science fiction fantasy imagination i think you're gonna love doing i hope you love it i hope you love it i couldn't put it down and remember fear is the mind killer fear is the mind killer <laughs> i've only read 20 pages of doom but i got that reference nice nice i finished book three last month that series goes deep i gotta read the other books i gotta read the other books dude that book is great infidel it's never it's never going to happen without voting reform who voting reform sure we need real voting reform but i think once people dante don't dismiss the snowball effect don't dismiss the snowball effect sometimes all you need is one person to call bs a bs and then everyone will look and go oh my god that's bs right sticks are man and i hope you're still here brother i hope i didn't turn you off i like your conversation i really do okay utah jazz chicho i voted for an independent candidate in utah who actually managed to win 20 percent of the vote which is borderline unprecedented awesome utah jazz awesome 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 that's the and that really rejuvenates you and energizes you no hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy was a mind opener for me when i was younger i still haven't read that i gotta read that amazing what is your name whose name he's been doing this for two hours now almost two hours yeah yeah no break between in the two hours but two hours is uh, at this level i could probably last well we've done cooking streams of like six hours me going ballistic so i can do i mean at this point you're talking about a revolution dante all revolutions don't have to be violent some revolutions can be extremely peaceful any good reads on the western meddling in the middle east um which ones okay this one um let me find it for you uh, in uh, edward said word said um and uh or orientalism 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 edward said orientalism i've only read excerpts of this okay Did you say oh, oh did you did say that uh jr uh pubs did you say orientalism uh the, before me saying it i like you in the beginning the universe was created this made a lot of people angry and has been widely regarded as a bad move Rithia's awesome <laughs> Ender's game is great too, even though the author is a bit of an ass. Is he? Okay. I can't believe you never read Fraz Fanon before, but uh, to be honest, Fraz Fanon. I don't know Fraz Fanon. Can you post a link on Discord, please? Chicho, Orientalism? I, I just posted it here. Uh, I'll try to remember. I know I tell people to post it on uh, here. You know what? I'm going to go there right now. Apologies of sort of doing a little sidetrack. Hopefully we're not losing the stream or anything. Uh, books, heavy books. I'm going to put it in heavy books. Books, books. Do we have a heavy books section? Oh my God, we don't have a heavy books section. Do we have books? Books? Oh my God, where do I put it? Bye. Philosophy, politics. Hey, how come we don't have a book section? I thought we had a book section uh gaming comics oh my god we don't have a book section i'm gonna put it in general Boop. okay and then if you remind me 
I'll uh, Olive. If you remind me, I'll uh, I'll create a book section, and we can start the listing books there. Orientalism is a good book. Franz Fana. That's the opening line to Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Cool. What is? Wait a second. What's the opening line for Hitchhiker's Orientalism? Is a... No. There, 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 there. Okay, I, I lost it. I love the first Hitchhiker's book. Make a book section. I gotta make a book section. I can't believe we don't have a book section. Can you look after your plants, please? <laughs> I do. <laughs> They're good. This one is crazy. Look at this. This one's beautiful. Just beautiful. And it's it's awesome because the seeds on it just fall. Like these are the seeds that just j keeps on dropping seeds. I've got to create, i got to grow another one of these. More light and a little bit of more watering. Doing good. I like that. We have heavy books on Discord. Oh, it's called heavy books. Pooper scooper. Heavy books. That's right. Light books. Did we... Ding, ding, ding. Oh, yeah. We didn't call it books. We called it light books and heavy books. I knew we had it. Okay. So I'm going to list it here Doop, in heavy books. And I'm going to kill what I posted on Discord general here. I'm just going to delete this one because it doesn't belong here. Delete this one. Delete. Okay, cool. Thanks, Dante. I knew we had it. This is, uh, I forget what it's called. <laughs> A long one, I know. I forget what it's called. It's crazy. It's awesome. Look at this thing. It's like an alien. Look at this. War is coming for you. War. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to put this guy so it hangs grows down yeah let it hang are you gonna call it a stream i think so we're gonna call the streams two hours two hours i also love douglas adams who whole thing about a uh sediment puddle believing the whole the whole is in it it lives it must have been created specifically for it because it fits in so oh really that sounds like a crazy book it points out the logical flaw of creation so well really you thought that that sounds interesting is that a succulent it's a succulent yeah it's a succulent hey Ch hey chicho you got any cooking streams videos coming up uh not yet um but i think we should do um i do plan on doing some fall cooking uh, cooking up uh, root vegetables and lamb stew uh, so we do okay I just got to get caught up a little bit with my stuff and by the way I'm gonna put this out to you guys should we for those of you who are left here by the way should we load this video on YouTube loves them she has them all over her house yeah succulents are amazing should we load this on YouTube or just leave it on bit shoot maybe we should load this on youtube uh because it is important i don't know youtube's rolling in some stuff i don't want the channel to get killed right we need to keep that channel alive for now uh for as long as we can anyway uh, difficult choice difficult choice should we load this on youtube youtube no idea youtube won't like it and the conversation been a bit all over the place i don't think i would load it because this stream was all over the place uh are they rocks on the bottom no it's just soil no so no youtube think olive says youtube think says no youtube are they right behind the lamp oh yeah these are, yeah these are my crystals and stuff check this out this is a borehole sample i got from uh i used to do geophysics honestly <laughs> i used to do geophysics right and this is a borehole sample from like six kilometers down one of the deepest mines in north america uh from sudbury here is this is my crystal collection check this out 
I have one crystal video out there, but I haven't shown these ones yet. Uh, the ones I showed were my partners. Cut out the best parts and put them in a compilation. Do you believe in the power of crystals? Yeah, crystals have power for sure. If you want a greater reach on YouTube, you should edit your streams. Yeah, it takes a lot of a uh, lot of effort. I'm, I mean, we're pr I'm producing so much right now. It just takes a little bit of time to do it. Actually, I'm going to load up one edited version uh, right after the stream on YouTube. Um, it's it's the one about relationships. Okay, I'll think about it, Dante. Uh, let me think about this. I know all of you want it on YouTube. I much prefer Twitch to YouTube. The interaction with the stream is mostly why I feel that way. Yeah, for sure. I love the chat as well. Cut out compilation. The problem with YouTube is they're rolling out some stuff that's going to, like the political streams that are loading on, YouTube is automatically not monetizing them, right? So their algorithms have become powerful where they're zapping. I don't want... Uh, okay, you know what? Maybe this is what I'll do. Nice crystal. Thanks, Dante. I want to see the borehole. <laughs> Post eating is surprisingly time consuming and difficult, in my opinion. Editing, it is. Utah Jazz, it is. It's definitely time intensive, but the thing is, the YouTube algorithm does not favor long videos. Actually, Dante, it does favor long videos. The ASMR videos, the long videos, if you're the math videos that I'm doing, they're long content, so people watch those for a long time because it has a lot of concepts in there and connecting. So if it's one topic, it does okay, especially the live stream. Well, yeah, the live streams, I agree with you. You know what I'll do? I'm going to load this on BitChute, okay? And I'll have a watch through it. If there's segments that I can take out, I'll just take segments and load those on YouTube and then link in the description uh, to BitChute. And I don't know if we're going to load anything from this video onto YouTube. And it's all time allowing. So all of, uh, no, but this uh, JR guy seems a bit trolly to me. Yeah, we're going to call the stream. Please show us the Warhol. JR, pubs, or is that pubes? Either way. Uh, play nice. Okay. Stop about the Warhol. Agreed. Listen to Dante, please. He's got a sword. He can use the sword. Okay. Um, okay, gang. We're going to call the stream. I'm, at some point, I'm going to... As an... No, you're not being nice. I'm, you know what? I'm going to do this part. I'm going to time you out. Oh, that didn't work. What happened? Oh, it doesn't exist. The guy gone. Okay. Well, that I use anyway. Damn. <laughs> okay, gang. We'll call the stream. Thanks for being here. Okay. Thanks for the conversations. Really, thanks for the conversations. Uh, oh, oh well. Specific. Yeah. Wait. You make specifically make ASMR videos? Yeah. Utah Jazz. Do Chicho ASMR. You'll see them. Okay. Do Chicho ASMR, you see them. You'll see a few of them. There's comic book ones, there's math ones, there's eating ones, there's plant ones, there's crystal ones, there's gaming ones, there's there's a bunch of them. Okay. Uh, there's me combing my gigantic beard one. <laughs> I'll see you guys tomorrow if I can, uh, if you guys can make it. And tomorrow we're doing the, oh, I can't even see the stream, the event. Tomorrow we're doing at 12 p.m. Okay. 12 p.m. tomorrow, we do a live stream. Uh, thanks for taking care of business, Dante. Thank you for being patient. Really, thank you for being patient. I appreciate that. Uh, and everybody else, thank you for being patient. Any trolls that came in, sorry, man. Uh, I hope you weren't able to get banned or timed out. Uh, please play nice here. Uh, and everyone that participated in the conversation, thank you for participating, okay? I'll see you guys tomorrow. And uh, I hope you have a fantastic, fantastic Saturday. Bye, Olive.